So uh, welcome to uh, Metaverse class on behalf of Hiroshi and Valentin and, and myself. Great to see uh, people here and also on the Zoom. Uh, we've got a, a, another special talk or set of talks today where we start looking at, uh, it's one of our strongest themes, blurring the lines between physical and digital worlds. We have some people that are really pushing the edge of that concept in interesting ways. And they're both uh, with strong MIT connections. So we're going to start with uh, Shinuchi uh, uh, Kasahara. I believe, is he starting or is Karthik starting? Huh? Who's starting? Shinichi. Shinichi is starting. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Shinichi, he spent time in, in uh, Hiroshi's group, and then we're going to hear from Karthik Bala, who was uh, uh, also here at Sloan, who went on to uh, start Bellon Ventures, in addition to many other things. So Valentin will give you the details, and we'll kick off. Go ahead, Valentin. Yeah, yeah I'm you'll need this, I think. Super happy to introduce Shinichi. We have a long history. He was a visiting researcher here in Hiroshi's group. And uh, one day, I stumbled into his uh, office, and he worked on a experiment with augmented reality and robotics and and uh, build some paradigms out how to move robots with AR and I looked at this and it just literally uh you know this moment and that was 10 years ago I still work on these things so <laughs> so I uh, we kicked off I think we had we wrote three papers together over the summer uh that we worked on all kinds of augmented reality related things and we, we, we started a project we called Electron at the time, then it became Smarter Objects and it became Reality Editor. And then yeah, I still work on these things. So um, I'm super happy to, that uh, Shonishi is visiting us virtually today. And of course he has his uh, career in, uh, in Sony. He, he started first as an engineer in Sony and then he moved in, uh, Rikimoto's lab, I think, and uh, and and uh, did his PhD and is now a researcher at Sony CS, CSL, and he has uh, a, a long history in in arts and in HCI, and uh, he has a, a new research uh, direction that I just saw. So I want to hand it over to you, Shinichi, uh to to. In, to, to continue the introduction of yourself and start your talk. Sure. So Valentin, uh, thank you for a great introduction. And I'm super, super happy to meet you in, in the battery. And then, yeah, so we have a kind of very long history and then having a very good cooperation together. So um, then, yeah, so maybe I should start some the presentation here. So can you see my screen? Good. Yes. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, and also um, one thing, one thing, give me, give me a second, maybe before like stop and share it. Give me a second. Uh, maybe I should change. So may, may I, may, may I turn on the, my AI assistant to transcri transcribe the system? So just for my talk. Thank you. Like I just, I just leak on my talk. Yeah, this. So maybe like my AI assistant will join in Zoom. Anyway, so um, so uh, Brentin, thank you for the inviting me to this talk, and uh, also uh, I'm I'm super happy to see Hiroshi again in Meet Bajri, and then <laughs> thank you so much, and happy to see you again. So uh, today, um, so so uh, the Brentin, so I think that Brentin, so. I have a still 40 minutes talk, or should I a bit shrink into the 40, 30 minutes or something? You have uh, you have uh, 45 minutes, yes. 45 minutes, okay. Yes. 45 minutes talk plus um, 15 minutes QA or something? Yes. Okay, got it. Perfect. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so maybe I should stand on the stop watching and uh, otherwise I always miss the time. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, so thank you for, thank you for inviting me. And then as the, as uh, as the Valentin said, so after, so I was in the visiting researcher in that Hiroshi's group. And then after that, I'm back to, came, 
Uh, at that time, I was in the engineer in the Sony Corporation, and then after that, coming back from the MIT research, visiting researcher, uh, I was I finished some PhD at the Tokyo University and the Leki Motors Group, and then, and also uh, I was join I, I joined the Sony Computer Science Laboratory and doing uh, more like the human augmentation things. And then recently, uh, I think from I think like a three or four years ago, uh, I started my own project in Sony CSO, which is called Superception Project. And then recently, I also uh, opening my the studio, research studio in uh, OIST, which is collaboration with Sony and the Okinawa Science and Technology. I will touch on this a bit uh, things later. But anyway, so today I, will, I am very happy to talk about my research about the cybernetic humanity. And I think that is a uh, closely related to the metaverse and also the new form of the human and also the existence. So I'd like to start my talk here. Right. Okay. So now also you can see that my, my project from here, this, this website, so if you want, you please check. <clears throat> Okay, so the my, the my research vision and also my research theme is talking about this humanity, but also not like a usual humanity, but most also talking about the cybernetic humanity. And this is exploring the new human, new humanity emerging from the integration of the humans and computers. Because as we may know, uh, the computer is not like a just for human. So now with the, the computer technology and the computation and also human is more like deeply in intervening and not connecting each other, integrating each other. And then the question comes. So then the, in those kind of the situation that the human and computer it integrates, how we can define ourselves and how we can feel like uh, this is still me or not. Because of the, kind of the without those kind of notion of the humanity or some like a, the careful design of the, this integration, we will lose the humanity and then we will lose like, what we are doing. So from that point of view, the, when we think about the technology environment, evaluation, evaluation, we have to really care about uh, how we can design the humanity in the computer and the technology co coming together. That is kind of one point. And then the, uh, let me a bit uh, introduce myself a bit more about like I was, I my role is actually three parts. So I am in the doctor, uh, I am in the research and Sony Computer Science Laboratory, and I am working as a researcher for about like a, the kind of the computer uh, computer human interaction and the human perception and cognition and also uh, human augmentation things. And then I my work was uh, being published in Kai or some t uh, transaction of the applied perception or augmented human or AR or VR related conferences. So that is kind of my one side of my uh, job. And another job is actually doing some engineering things like uh, creating some of the new technology and also like providing some the system to make it more like a new uh, new experience, make it a new experience. So uh, my the part of my background is engineer. And the third pers perspective of myself is actually the, the artist. So the two to, to evaluate and to appreciate the, my research vision, sometimes I made a, some of these um, interactive art using technology such as um, the morphing faces or like a projection mapping or something. And then this is also important to involve the, the public person or many person get into the joining the, our research cycles and then creating some interesting research cycles. So I will also touch in a little bit later. But uh, okay, so then today I will talk about the cybernetic humanity. And then this, um, I made a, this presentation for this uh, Metabus uh, class. I, I made a, this uh, the agenda for today. So I will start by talking about the potential of the Metabus. So the thinking about the, the metaverse, of course, you might think about it, for instance, like using Hetman display and seeing your virtual body. But this is the point because in the virtual reality or something, we can manipulate the, how we can see the bodies in virtual reality world. So the, there are so much potential about like this is a visualization. And then I want to I want to introduce one of the project I did in almost like five years ago, but still it's very interesting. So I will start this, introducing this project. This is called Maya Bo Embodiment. And this is the collaboration with y Yam Yamaguchi Center of Art, Art and Media and also Keio University. And 
So the the things uh, the <clears throat> this system is actually using the virtual a virtual reality system using the motion capture and you see like your body in the virtual reality world and you see like a virtual mirror and they're watching your body. And then hope that you can oh, maybe you don't hear the sound right. I guess you don't. The can you can you hear the the video the sound? No. No. Okay. 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 Anyway. That's fine. Okay. So, give me a second. So, the, we using by using this system, the people uh, get starts to feeling their body lighter, even we don't doing anything about the body itself. It's actually sorry. In this is Japanese, but uh, this is actually um, what we are doing is the temporal spatial deformation of the body representation. So for instance, like if we apply not on not not instead of the showing actual real time body, but instead of the actual showing body, we anticipate temporarily, we anticipate the body movement and the showing instead of the body, the other body. And then in, with this situation, the, they started to feel, oh body my body get lighter. And then also you can imagine like if we apply like a slightly heavier, uh, sorry, the delay of the body, uh, the visualization, and then they feel like, oh, my body get heavier. Uh, so uh, this is the point is that we don't do anything. We didn't do anything about like a physical. So like, we don't, we didn't do any like injection of the, the medicine or some uh, the uh, putting some like, um, the weights, but uh, this actually uh, the change the, the the way of the sense of the body. So the, this point is actually, so even if they did not notice the visual changes, for instance, they, they didn't uh, the notice like a, uh, this, you know, the body get faster or slower. They just feel, oh, my get, body get heavier or lighter. So this is the point, because this is the implicit change of the sense of body. And also we can make it parameterized which means like I, you know, the, he is doing some motion and then I actually change the time parameter without knowing, with, without him knowing it. But still he, he, he's like, oh, my body get lighter, something, a very good condition, something. Right, so um, that's from that point of view, uh, I think the changeable rendering body is actually change the sense of body. And also, even without knowing, uh, with the people with knowing it, so it means like we can inject some like implicit change of the body by means of the changing the rendering of the body. So that is the one potential, and then also like uh, the <clears> that I, I want to start like another topic about like, uh, potential of the metaverse is like uh, go beyond the limit of the one mind, one body, which means like, of course, you, you, we, we now is uh, using some one body by based on the mind, one mind, but also um, by virtual reality or some robotics, we can also imagine like, using two bodies by one, one mind. So to test, test the, these ideas, we actually, so for instance, again, imagine like we have some robot, robotic body and then doing some kind of motion. So yeah, so now you can feel like, oh, this robot arm is myself. But not only having the one body, but you can, we can also imagine, like, oh, maybe we have uh, the two body at the same time, something like this, right? So we can also apply this idea into the virtual reality as well. But then, then, then we actually did a project called Parallel Ping Pong. This is the trial for like a, doing the ping pong game, two ping pong game at the same time. So something like this. So, okay. So we can imagine using virtual reality and also robotic, uh, the, uh, the body. So we can move two bodies at the same time, something like this. And then using that, so we try the, the this project called Parallel Ping Pong. So maybe not sound. Something like this. <laughs> and the, the idea is like using the robot arm and also the point cloud rendering to the virtual reality and then providing switching, switching the situation that they can see the both tables happening and also can the hit back to the, the ball. But also, the, uh, obviously, actually, the, the using robot arm and then doing a reaction in real time is very hard work. 
actually. And then, so on, even in the one body, actually, it's uh, very tough, no, honestly. And because of the latency of the system and the latency of the human as well, uh, so it's almost uh, unable to hit back the fast enough. But we can also imagine using the AI or some computational technology to overcome those limitations. For instance, we can imagine like a, the estimating ball trajectory and the hit back. Uh, the, it's a like hit back the, by the bottom itself, of course, something like this. But then the, our, our approach is actually integrating those the automatic automatic robotic movement plus the human. And then people the feel like, oh, um, still the physical, oh, I am doing this motion. And by applying this technique, so we can end up, we can make it like a two body at the same time, but still I'm doing these two bodies, the motion, something like this. So this, we show the, we, we show it's actually in the SIG of Asia and last year, and then we made a, a public execution, something like this. And then many people feel that. So many other actual detail will be, uh, was uh, public, published in the AH last year, but the, the, they, even though we have uh, some providing some two bodies experience, the many people mentioned like, oh, still I'm the feeling of the sense of agency, which is I'm doing this action with two bodies, right? So those, this is the one point. But the, the, this was a very the preliminary experiment with uh, using the two bodies. But the, here the question comes is actually, so this is because of very, the, you know, the execution style. But the, when we think about uh, using two bodies, more like a fundamental and also like a more basic questions comes, which is like, a, the, can we can we get like a sense of the body in two bodies at the same time? For instance, this is more like when we think of the more motor control, the more the human perception level, we have to think of the, can we adapt the two, multiple body at the same time? So for instance, imagine you have a, so, now we have imagined that we are using one body and that we are very adapted to this body and doing this motion, right? So for that, we, we have adapted this body. That's why, for instance, even we, you are closing your eye and you can do something like this, right? So because you have, a, you have a, the motor model of your body, body movement, that's why we can do it, something like this. But what if we have a multiple bodies and same slightly different um, different configuration? For instance, like a one body is getting heavy, very very big body, and then one body is a small body, or one body is maybe the longer arm or shorter arm or something like this. Then can we can we adapt these different bodies at the same time? And this is very uh, important question about when we think about like a go beyond to the one body. And we actually applied uh, this, uh, we uh, tackled this question about uh, this multiple uh, adaptation using uh, visual motor rotation experiment. So visual motor rotation, so uh, I will a bit touch on the visual motor rotation experiment, uh, which is the fundamental experiment about like a motor learning. So I will a bit uh, explain about these things. So uh, the visual motor rotation is actually a well-known experiment about like a motor learning. So maybe I can show some video. Uh, yeah, so something like this, maybe. Okay. Okay. So for instance, you can see like uh, now the the he is doing some like a leech motion in virtual reality uh, body, and you see like uh, he is touching the target here, right? So the, this is a task, but the point is actually the applying some visual motor perturbation, which is like a, applying some rotation in the virtual body. So you see like a, so we can apply rotation in the virtual hand, which means even you are doing some straight motion, you see the virtual body in slightly rotated from your side pointing. So this is a well-known visual motor rotation. Then if we apply this virtual body rotation gradually, something like this, well, sorry, maybe I should take. So if we, we apply this visual motor rotation gradually up to, for instance, like plus 15 something, and then stay a bit long, actually we can adapt this rotation without knowing the rotating. So, okay, so maybe like you see, like this is he's doing this motion. We are gradually, gradually applying the rotation. 
the, this is very small. That's why they are, uh, the participant did not notice the rotation. But still, even that without knowing the rotation, they, we can adapt this rotation, which means like even, for instance, if we apply some plus 15, we can implicitly compensate this rotation. And then the, it means the physical movement is actually go to the minus 15 and then compensating this visual motor uh, perturbation. Right. And then also the moment of the, this here, so if you apply some visual motor rotation and the stays and then back to zero, in that moment, which means like a, this is happening somewhere, like a visual motor rotation is gone. And then they will notice that, oh, the visual motor rotation gone and then we have to back to the original motion, something like this. This is called washout. And then if we apply this idea into the virtual reality and also this very known phenomena is actually happening. So here we apply the visual motor rotation gradually and it stays and back to zero. And then you see, this is a directional error. So even we apply some visual motor rotation, the directional error stays very low. And if it means like a people is adapting the rotation. But so here, the moment of the washout, it means like a removing out the rotation they 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 have uh, some opposite error, which means because they are adapted to plus fifteen, it means like a, actually the moment of the at the finish, uh, the rotation they removed, they provide like produce like a opposite directional error. And here is the point. Even we know that oh rotation was removed, we have to have uh, some time to adapt to go the normal. So this is called after effect. This is because happening, this is because we adapted this own internal body model into this rotation. So, so this is happening in the internal model and the several cortex. So which means like a, we are internally uh, change some body model. That's why we, ha we have to have a time to go back to the normal. So this is a very known code of visual motor rotation and also after effect. So the important point is the this the after effect is uh, happening if we apply in the implicit adaptation, right? This is the point. But still, this is very known phenomena in the visual motor rotation in the usual motor, uh, the one bodies. But here the question, if what if we apply two body and two body rotation at the same time, which is the paradigm we invented recently is like, a, like if we apply it like a visual motor, so for instance, imagine we, we have a uh, two bodies, uh, two body representation in the virtual reality, and then one body, body A is going to plus 15. The one body is going to minus 15, right? And then what happens? The rotation. And then if we apply, the, uh, the result is actually, if we apply this rotation in the first person view, this is usual, you know, this is usual situation in the virtual reality. And then you see your body here. And then sometimes you see like a, a, a surround situation and also the, the skin of the body is change it, right? So this is, this is sometimes the body A and the body B. And the body A is going to plus 15 and the body B is going to minus 15. And you see there are many, uh, sorry, there, there are very strong error along with the visual motor rotation which means like they cannot, they could not adapt for both rotation. And also the, when we, the moment of the washout, they didn't show like after effect, which means like after the, after the finishing up the rotation, they just go back to normal and without error, right? Because they didn't adapt this rotation both. So which means like, and also this is a highly cognitive demanding, which means like, oh, this blue body, for instance, like this purple crosses, I have to go to slightly left. And then this pink shots, I have to slightly go to light something. So they have to very think about like an adaptation and the strategy to move. So this is very highly cognitive demanding and they also no uh, internal model update and no implicit adaptation. But the, we have actually found very interesting phenomena in if we apply this same situation in third person perspective. So here you see like uh, sometimes the, in the blue, uh, purple body and the yellow, uh, sorry, purple shots and also pink shots, we switch the perspective. So the actual motion is actually almost the same, but only we only change the perspective showing on body 
from the bit slightly the show off shoulder view. And if you, if you, if you <coughs> sorry, when we apply this uh, perspective situation, you see, uh, as you can see, sorry, if you, if you observe some error signals, this is showing like a, even we apply opposite rotation for each body, the directional error stays low, something like this. It means they actually, the participant actually adapting the both opposite rotation in same time. Even we provide like a randomly ordered some the stimuli. And also the more importantly, when we apply, when we finish some rotation, we see the very strong after effect after the washout, which means like a, the people is actually adapted in implicitly both rotation. And then after that, like finishing the rotation, they actually showing very strong after effect in opposite way. So this actually showing that like uh, we are, if we apply this visual motor rotation in opposite visual motor rotation with different perspective, people actually can adapt visual uh, the opposite rotation. And also importantly, they did not notice, not so much people notice that the rotation itself. It means like a, they just feel like, oh, I'm doing just go straight. It's actually, the motion is actually different, but they didn't notice that uh, the things. That's why th this is actually happening in the almost implicit, which means the low cognitive load. So they don't, the participant did not, you know, the sync and also focus on the rotation. That they're just doing some simple things, but actually the load, this like uh, the adaptation is happening, right? So the, it means like we are, if we apply some those kind of trick of the perspective, we can apply some visual mode, uh, the dual adaptation, which means like a multiple body adapt, adapt uh, we can apply, uh, we can adapt multiple bodies in parallel. So uh, of, of, of course we can, then we can apply this idea to, into the virtual reality body, something like uh, imagine you have, a, you have to ch choose, you have to doing like a several task in virtual reality and the different body configuration. Even we, if we apply these kind of techniques, we can apply, we can adapt many type of the bodies in the same time. But uh, the point is here is actually the perspective matters. Because uh, the, 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 I think one, one of the, the invention of the metaverse or virtual reality is actually, we see your, our own body from uh, other perspective. This is actually the very strong invention of the technology. So I, I think that the, one, of the, one of the potential is actually the using new perspective is actually open up the new possibility of the human adaptation, I guess. So that is, that, uh, the, this, this is what I was talking about, like a perspective. And also, if we apply this idea into the, the one, beyond one mind, one body, we can use this implicit process of the adapting multiple body, which means we can still have some resources, mental resources for doing explicit actions for each body, which is actually important because if you have consumed or we consume the explicit resources doing, doing things, uh, many things, we cannot, you know, the, the preserve like a mental effort to doing. But if we apply the implicit adaptation to body multiple bodies, we can use the explicit resources doing multiple tasks in, in virtual reality. So that is an important question, uh, important pointing point of the March one body. Okay, so, and then the, from those kinds of the stories, I just want to uh, go to the next topic of America, to what extent are we ourselves? Well, this is a bit, uh, bit from the beyond the metaverse things, but I think still the important question about when we think about metaverse. So, and then here is I want to start with the talking about the, this is my action things. Okay, so this is the collaboration with uh, Jun Nishige and Kenji Suzuki uh, in the Tsukuba University of Tsukuba, and we did it in the SIGGRAPH uh, ETEC in uh, 2017. And then this called project is Wild Muscle. So um, if you have a, so if you have a chance and then you know the you if you are attending this this class and physically and if you have a pen, please uh, try yourself with your friends or neighbors about uh, this experiment. But uh, I want to start the pen drop test, pen drop experiment. So when we think about doing something like this, 
So if you try this the pen drop, uh, the other person in the pen drop, it, it actually it's almost impossible to catch the pen. But if we apply the, some new technology to applying some technologies, okay, we can catch the pen something like this. You see this, so so um, so it's it's so nice if you can try by yourself and then pen drop, and then usually and then this kind of the white border pen it's hard very hard to catch, and also even you get them a drink or something it's the this reaction time gets super longer so it's almost impossible, but uh, here that you see like uh, this, this the demonstration the people is can get the pen so I will uh, explain about why. Possible, uh, yeah. So maybe I see like uh, somebody, somebody is doing something. So please try it uh, in your physical. Yeah. So we have something. So maybe you should you can try like a very, very close to your the hand, and then something like maybe like you see, like a something like this. So you you see like something like this. Maybe, maybe something. And then, of course, uh, when I try myself, it's almost impossible. Possible. I it's possible to catch my by myself, but if the other guy, other people is release the pen and then try to this pen, it's uh, very possible uh, like hard to try try by yourself. Uh, but anyway, so the this is very quite important. Uh, uh, this is very quite hard. And then why why we cannot catch the pen? Uh, I will explain. Is actually in the human process we have a latency of the perception and the cognition and the multiple because in the moment of the, the person A is release a pen, the person B is the perceptive the, the motion, uh, the visual, and also understand the oh pen is starting to drop. And then start to think about the motor plan to catch the pen. And then after that all the way along to the, the, the nerves, the, mo the, the motor signal come to the muscles and the muscles start to actuate. And then finally we can get the pen. So in the, all the way along to the, some signals, it actually takes like a 250 milliseconds, which is like a, which is like a longer than the pen drops. That's why we cannot catch the pen. Why? So that, that's that's the reason for why we cannot catch the pen. But in the the video, what we had, the behind the magic behind it is actually we measure the EMG electromyography. Uh, the muscle activi activity activity in your person A and the detecting moment of the muscle activation. And they also send a signal to the, mus the person B that we actually apply the electro muscle stimulation, which is actually applying some electricity into the, your muscle directly. And then this uh, EMS actu actually actuate your finger uh, by by means of the electron mass stimulation. That's why we can get the pen, right? So in the moment of the, this here, this is actually the this is the my electromyography, and then this is here is we I paste the elect, um, elect, EMS electron mass stimulation. That's why we can catch the pen, right? So and then that's that's the point. But uh, here, um, sorry, <clears throat> and then we we show the this. Uh, the work for the many venues, like including C graph and then, uh, and then for instance, in this video, for instance, okay, in this video, oh, sorry, in this video, in this video, the first trial is actually without EMS. In the second trial, we secretly turn on the EMS, okay? Then please start. The first, it, he could not catch the band. The second, he could catch the pen, right? Then, look, then we actually the exhibit this work for many venues, but uh, in the very beginning of the project, we just showing this project and then, okay, so like uh, we can we can accelerate your kind of the, the grabbing motion and then the people, is, uh, we are just like happy to, oh, maybe we can make, can make it faster. But uh, some people, uh, or actually many people mentioned that like, oh, I could catch the pen. Many after that experiencing this the tricks, many people mentioned that oh this is my action, this is what we uh, I did, and this uh, feel like uh, I could catch the pen. But I we actually explain explained a lot of oh, this is not 
your ability. This is because of EMS, electromassive stimulation. So um, actually, so this is not your ability, but many people mentioned that like, oh, but I feel like, oh, this, I feel like, oh, I could catch a pain. So I think that we, we found that this is very interesting because this electromassive stimulation or con contraction of the muscle is actually happening before you move. But still, we feel like, oh, this is my action. So I, 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 I found, we found like a, this is a very interesting phenomena in the terms of the uh, human argumentation. Even we apply some slightly faster than we can do, but still we feel like it. Then we started to the collaboration with uh, Jun and also Pedro. And then, then, then how we can, when is the moment of the, the sense of agency, the sense of the I am doing is preserved? In, in the many cases. And then we've applied a very simple uh, psychophysical experiment to investigate something. So it's like a very simple experiment. So we apply EMS and then the task is very simple. So if you see some mark and please uh, touch, the, touch the screen and also uh, the, the answer to how much feel, feel like you did it. But also at the same time, we applied EMS in the various moment and then we uh, uh, investigate how much we uh, preserve sense of agency, which is I feeling I'm doing. And we um, plot the, the curve and we found actually, even we apply, sorry, even we apply the, the EMS, which means the, the, the faster motion, then the, maybe like I should, oh, sorry, I couldn't see. You cannot see the story, sorry. Anyway, so this is 80 millisecond. So if you, even we apply the acceleration 80 millisecond faster than you can do, but still many people mentioned like a, almost like half, but half had 50, 50% value. We, feel, we mentioned like, oh, this is still me and this is still my motion. So uh, we found like a, this is this is a key point. So like a, if you apply this kind of acceleration, even if we apply some faster than that you, you can do, but still, I feel like we can feel like, oh, I did it, right? So this is one example of how we can how we can deal with the sense of self, but even we apply some augmentation of the bodies. But here the point is like, we have some internal system of the mind, human in the input and the action and the attribute, which means like, oh, the, the this consequence actually causes my me by self. But also we can, when we think about human augmentation or computer human integration, so also computer is behind myself and also doing the actuation, the creating action through myself and the which might be the, the integrated action. And the question is like how we can attribute these things. And the way we think about those kinds of the, uh, the computer the system, that actually almost like a point, when we think about like a visual reaction, the process, actually machine vision now is more much faster than human actually. And also when we think of the AI or something recently, the AI sometimes overtake, over, uh, over compute the human motion or something. The, so those kinds of the things is actually uh, the lead us to think about it like again, how we can this uh, idea into the more complete, uh, complex task and then more like in the choice task. Okay, so then we can we can imagine like we are I'm doing something, doing like a game or something. Then I feel like I'm doing this game, but also the computer agent or AI or computer is also intervening your motion, and then uh, actuate your body. And then in that situation how much we, I feel like we feel like this is my emotion or something. And then we actually tried this question always by applying EMS experiment. And then this is correlation with Daisuke, June and Pedro and me. And then this is the two Kai paper uh, the last year, or uh, the two, two, uh, two years ago. And this is, the food, food, this is called the food, food touch is this. So this is very, uh, the simple experiment which like a, providing some cognitive loaded task. It's called uh, the Stroop test. Then you can see here, the red and blue, but uh, you see here, if you ask to touch the red text, you might feel a bit confused because the red text is actually blue and the blue text is actually red. It's those kinds of interference actually uh, making some like a confusion of them, our cognition, and then it's actually cognitive loaded. And then this kind of the very fast task you see like uh, something like this very quickly, you know, 
uh, uh, once again maybe you see uh, yeah I think that will be very hard but uh, we uh, we apply this idea into the EMS so you can see like EMS here and then participants have to touch some like a uh, corresponding question and also EMS actuate your finger uh, more the muscles then this is actually creating interesting matrix matrix between the EMS computer computer generated movement and also user because user of course like this kind of task is actually cognitive loaded and it's very hard to react very fast it means sometimes uh, of, of course sometimes people make some correct action and also sometimes user makes incorrect motion right so it's the all correct incorrect and also we can also intentionally apply some incorrect movement or correct movement by EMS right so if those in this situation the here for instance can use a correct EMS correct this is a joint success between human and computer and also user incorrect and the EMS incorrect is actually providing a joint failure between human and computer and the other side, as you see, like uh, even user incorrect, incorrect, EMS can provide correct motion, which is like a false success, and then vice versa. False, we can also make false failure, right? And then with this situation, we apply the same the paradigm what we doing the EMS test, like applying many many type of the EMS, and then how we then we observe how we can feel like a sense of agency, which is I'm doing this, and then. <clears throat> so then we then this is a summary of the experiment but you see like for instance uh if we <clears throat> sorry if the user and also ems provide the same motion which means a joint success or joint failure which mean okay in this situation you see like this is uh, the offset ems offsets which means like how much ems uh, uh when when ems apply the motion and also this the vertical is as agency which means like how much feel like i am doing this and then here you see like this is the offset significantly this offset is actually providing showing that if <coughs> sorry if the, the the task was correct the the people feel like a more agency than the the failure which means like a, it's 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 like a it's kind of an outcome bias it's like a, if the task was success the people feel like, oh this is this is because me and if the task was a failure and the beam uh, a participant blames a machine that like, oh this is not my emotion something and then fa failure to machine right so this is like intrinsic the situation of the outcome bias and happening even in a very simple task and this is more like not so much cognitive load task but almost like a perception level of it this is happening something like this but also um it, when this is uh the case like uh, if the incongruent situation which means the user and ems move differently it's actually not uh, that this kind of outcome bias doesn't didn't happen which means like a user having a very clear distinction between i did or i did not depending on the timing so you know so this is like a not so much like a, this kind of outcome bias didn't happen but they feel like oh uh, this is they they we feel like a very clear distinction right so of course we can apply this idea into some like a trade-off matrix think about agency assistant trade-off which means like when we want to think about this augmented technology to a human we want to think about this matrix but also uh, important findings here is actually when we think about like attribution self we have a different the notion of the error sense so it means like if we have some congruent situation with like both like ems and i am doing the same motion the sensory error is actually small only small sensory error that's why we still can attribute the integrated action myself but if it's a congruent situation it, it, this actually is changing a different hands is actually produced a larger sensory error and that's why we cannot feel like this is my action so when we think about this kind of thing so preserving sense of itself we have to think about the different comparative of the context level and also sensory level 
So which means like a sensory level. So we, if we want to integration with a human computer, we want you have to care about the sensory level component, which means preserving sense of self. And then from that point of view, we can we then we can we can come to the context level component. That means me like a, it's like a integrating. Um, so the intention is aligned to computer and humans. So those kinds of things of the the thinking about this alignment is important to human augmentation and also integration. Okay. So uh, from those point kind of view, uh, I, I, I this is like an in outcome from the, this kind of the, the human computer integration. And the last part is actually want to touch on the slide, uh, quickly touch on the recent project and the which is uh, accepted the two uh, this year's Kai and then talking about uh, more uh, identity. So let me go to a bit. Sorry, I, I want to skip by some slide because I have some time pressure, but maybe I can go to here. Right, okay. So uh, this is called the called morphing identity and um, exploring self sense of self. So for instance, the idea, the story behind this work, usually recently, uh, it's a COVID situation get slightly relaxed, but uh, we know that uh, many people is interacting each other in the room or some visual base. And if it's actually questioning me like, uh, that we are collaborating over the video and then we see the like, uh, own faces in the, over the video. Now what if those kinds of facial identities actually move to each other, right? So then, to investigate this kind of identity, morphing identity, we apply the exhibition and exhibition based research using the face morphing system. So if you go to this booth and they capture the face and you see like a, this face, this is a kind of real time face, mark, uh, face morphing system and then she is moving her face here, right? So this is reflecting her motion. But uh, this is actually gradually her face is morphing into other person, the counter person, see? And finally, it's almost like swapped each other. All right. So we actually investigate this kind of type of the, uh, the experiments in the face swapping experiments and gradually, gradually changing in the exhibition settings. So the, <coughs> sorry, this is a most, uh, in, in, so this is a very simple experiment, but also the, in behind the technology, we use a uh, uh, style again, uh, the generative art, artificial network and the providing face morphing to between two faces and also like a face reactment technology to move like a uh, react in real time face uh, movement transfer, transfer into the one, uh, one body, uh, one movement. Which means that you see like a, for instance, uh, sorry, maybe I should, okay. For instance, you see like a, he started his own faces, a slightly beautiful, but he started his motion. But you see the focus on here, this face is gradually to be uh, me, for instance. And then, then we actually explore this kind of a type of the phenomena in the public exhibition. And then also doing some interviews, how we feel it, and also how much, how much do you, do you think this is me or not, right? So uh, for instance, like uh, we put like a system that like uh, they can answer that how much, how long did you feel yourself here or not? Then we the point that in the audience can using some foot switch to answering some when do you think this is not me or something, right? And then it is actually providing, so we are corrected almost like a 7,000 7, correction uh, data. And then we found like a, there are several, something like a, uh, the boundary of the self here. So 20, 15% 20 is actually the boundary of the self. And then over the, within the 20 self, 20%, 20 the, the almost half, half of the person is still believing that this is myself. This, is, this means like, oh, still, it's actually the morphing is happening, but still they feel like, oh, this is me, right? Then also we are actually doing the, uh, the questionnaire exploring exploration, but also like a, here, so we actually find like a, the quantity of the, myself, it's like a, in the sum of the level, we, we feel like a, this is me. In the sum level, 
it's mean like a sharing sharing face identity and the the almost like a last moment of the face morphing face morphing is actually swapped it actually feels like an intertwined facial identity and then it's each, each level so we feel like a different sense of the self and also identity over the faces right so anyway so we actually so we still uh may I think that we will uh, we will talk a bit more like precisely in the Kai conference this year. But we show we will show like a more like a detail in Kai Kai. But anyway, so from this kind of experiment, we found like a we in in kind of the, we found like a, there a count of self is there, and this is actually almost like the variable. And then to know like a, to know the variable, uh, this the sense of self is important to notion of the metaverse as well. So uh, the Tracy talk I mentioned about these three points, and then this is also like an important question about cybernetic cybernetic humanity. And the last point, cybernetic humanity, is actually how we can think about like a balance between augmentation and own subjectivity. Because when we think about augmentation with computer assist, uh, integration, we know that we can make it more like a variety of things, but also we have to care about like, our subjectivity, our sense of self. How we can those be bridge into this more, uh, two element is important. And I guess uh, to, uh, to investigate these things, I, uh, I'm doing like uh, this research cycle, like uh, this research through experience. So I'm doing like uh, doing that, um, the exhibition and also investigate some human perception and cognition in the build system. And these the cycles I am doing, ex um, investigate these uh, topics. Okay, so then uh, those kinds of projects was done by our great team, brilliant team in the Sony Share Cell. And then still re recently I've started to the, uh, the new, 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 new Cybernetic Humanity Studio in Okinawa, so maybe you can, if you have a time, come to that. Okay, so that is the end of my talk, and then thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take a question. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for for this talk. Um, we have the microphone here. Maybe we give it to you, Rashi. Hi, Shun, can you hear me? Yeah, I, I can hear you. Uh, I'm so glad to see you. And uh, also you really blossomed to many, many important directions in a very high level abstract art, also hardcore technology. I have uh, many questions, but let me ask two questions. First, yep. of, first question is, you said the multiple body. I do not yep. really understand. I'm a ping pong player. I yep. have to really focus to one game, one ball, but we are dividing attention. If I see yep. clearly, the prayer is time dividing, time sharing, not using yep. the same body for different purpose. If you do both, it's conflicts because both fly in a different way. So fundamentally, yep. are these really two body? If you compare two arms, I can do like a non-dominant non -dominant hand can uh, press the paper. Then I, dominant hand can be calligraphy, for example. It's a coordinated yep. yep. action. Or I can lift up heavy uh, table with Joe's help. So it's a coordinated stuff. I'm using yep. both hands for same task. So I'm not sure why this ping pong is a uh, evidence of the multi multi-body human can own and the controls. For me, it's like a time dividing. Also, you're carefully choosing very similar task, special task. Otherwise, you can do the same things. So I'm not sure how this can be a uh, scalable concept. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Yes, that is a quite uh, the fundamental question about like a much multi embodiment, because I do agree that uh, that you mentioned like uh, we have to really focus on the task. And then, honestly, I mentioned like a uh, one mind, one bo uh, one mind, multiple body. But I, I believe that our limitation, huge limitation, is uh, our focus or attention. This yes. is singular resources, I believe. So we cannot using multi-focus, multi-attention. We cannot make it, our brain is, doesn't allow multi-attention. Of course. So, I, be, I, so I, 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 I do agree that. So if, the point is like a, point so is like a- say, Okay, continue, please, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the point is like, a, actually I mentioned like a multi-body, but it's actually the para, truly parallel is not possible in human, I guess, I believe. The truly parallel in attention is not important. Uh, it's not of possible. But, of course, it's but, impossible. Yeah. Yes, but we can still doing some con con uh, concurrent tasks. So it means like a time. 
Yeah, uh, be careful. It's not the concurrent time slicing. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, time, time slicing. It's not, it's not a simultaneous at all. Yeah. Even it's not yeah. concurrent. That is a term very uh, liberally. Even body, you can do two things using two hands, but still mind yeah. is one. But you study the metaverse, yeah. not the yeah. avatar. It's a little yeah. you talk about 100 avatar you control with one body seems to be impossible. Especially yeah, the mind. You. Mind is not really do anything parallel. So I, I fundamental yeah. question about the thesis you put in the first uh, few slides. Yeah. Yes, thank you. And then here is the point. So it, in the real time sense, real time sense, we cannot do in parallel. And then this everything should be time slicing. But the second thing is human actually having some very strong characteristics of the past addiction, which means like interprets the past experience in after the after the happening, which means like even with some the time slicing, it's at the in the in the real time level, it's not parallel, honestly. It's a time slicing. But after the everything happened and after that, looking back to the 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 past, we feel like oh, two things happening. So this is actually the, the quite the, the trick of some the, how we how we can post predict, you know, the interprets the past experience and the, into yeah. the integrating the one prior memories. It's a term trick. It's very close. It's a trick. Fundamentally, if you do the time slicing, it degrade the performance significantly. Yep. Attention yep. once interrupted, then you forget to return address. That's a huge yep. problem of the juggling so many balls in the current. So it's a war of the attention. So I think yes, that yes. body really distracts the even focus, even single mind can be uh, scattered everywhere. So I wonder yeah. some fundamental question I want to raise before you push yeah. further. Thank you, thank you. And also that is a, here is a question, here is the point of the human and also computer should be integrated. So no, even that those kind that, those kind that's of- That's a, that's a, that's a meta question. What do you mean by integration? I asked the same question of Pedro Lopez. I don't get any clear answer because so many different granularity. What in the integration? I already have a smartphone always. Also, I'm thinking in a way that the Google uh, calendar organize the life. Yeah. So really integrated cognitively. But what do you mean by human, especially you said multi-body, then human content yeah. integration. So I couldn't get it from your uh, presentation. So it helped me to understand what you or Pedro or other people really think integration in which level of the granularity and why it makes sense. I found yeah, yeah, thank you. Web. Oh, oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you for it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I anyway. uh, should, should, should I answer or? Uh, I, I, no, I it is okay. I don't know because I really enjoy it because we had a, this discussion every day when you were here. So <laughs> fundamentally, because now you, you got a PhD. So I have to ask very hard, hard question, especially yeah. human integration sounds catchy, human augmentation, yeah. but it might be nothing new. You're just using the computers. And yeah, also, yeah, yeah. It can yeah. augment or distract. So both sides. So I, I also talk to Jun Kimoto. Why you call the human augmentation? It's already some optimistic bias. Technology does all so many things yeah. to change in the not desirable way. So I want to have a bit more neutral, uh, high level. Uh, mm -hmm. That's my advice. Thank you, thank you. And then the short question is like a, the computer visible. Then it's more like a work miser's vision. But I, in the body level. We cannot make like a cram technology into the human human body. It's actually a short question for the integration. But maybe we can talk. Maybe, maybe some maybe Kai conference. Let's talk together together more sure. deeper. Sure. Thank you. Thank and you. We have Thank a, you. A question on the Zoom. Uh, we have some other questions in the class. Uh, do you want to follow up? Yeah. Maybe we can do a similar class. Sure. Thanks, Danny. Uh, great, great to, to hear your work, Sunichi. It's uh, it's all inspiring and and it stimulates a lot of discussion. And uh, you know, part of me is in Hiroshi's camp, but part of me, I think, parts the clouds and and enjoys some of the comments or, or terms that you're you're making because the there is a real interest in in thinking this way. And I think uh, looking at your your multiple hands, multiple bodies. I think a bit about a really skilled piano player. Well, for instance, our, our fingers are all, if you're really good, we can do different things with them. We have recently worked with Jordan Rudis. I don't know if you know him. He's one of the world's best keyboard players. To see this guy play, it's like each hand is on a different body. It's incredible. I can't do it. I play piano, but they're really, my hands are pretty locked together. Uh, but if somebody reaches that apex, 
they can almost break their hands into separate submines. It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. we're able to plasticize to do things like this still, you know, with our neural connections that we have. Um, and going further, maybe when we start getting more intimate interfaces, there may be a way to plasticize and do something, especially with AI augmentation, that can add more effective neurons. So I think there's a future to this. It, it, it's going to be a journey that's going to take time and roll out to really become, you know, the ability to move oneself. So otherwise, you deal with abstractions, TDMA, and and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I thought of one other thing I was going to bring up. And uh, it has escaped me. So let's go to <laughs> other questions and that will come back. But this is going to be a prelude for the other question, but that will, that will come in a minute. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Kathy. Hi, Shunichi. Thank you Hi. so much for the inspiring talk. I've actually collaborated work on the transparency of human machine integration. Oh, Sorry, I, I cannot hear you well. Sorry. Is it too, too, too far away, maybe? It's getting some super small. I guess. Um, okay, I'll try to speak a little louder. Does that work? Oh, it's it's super, super tiny sound. Sorry, I cannot hear you well. Did you hit a button on it? You could hear my soft voice. Just leave it there and see. Is it working now at all? No, it's now. It's hearing very yeah, well. Yeah, just leave it on the table. Yeah. Um, okay, basically my question is, uh, so I'm interested in uh, teaching people how to learn a motor skill, for example, like the examples you've shown, um, but you've shown very like simple tasks like grabbing a pen or pressing buttons. Uh, I mean, ping pong granted is a very complicated task. Uh, I'm wondering if you've thought about other types of complicated tasks. Um, and also the methods you've shown are like EMS or retargeting the body, which are things that are imperceptible to the human perception. Uh, I'm curious if you have other types of methods that are maybe um, people can perceive that there's a machine that's helping them do the action um, because those two methods are basically warping the you know intended action by the human right whether it's like grabbing something or reaching um, and it's um, maybe basically letting the machine sort of taking over to do that work for them. Um, mm -hmm. But ultimately, it will be nice to allow people to be able to do the task even without these uh, interventions like EMS, yeah. like retargeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question. Now, the, I think that uh, there are several questions and then to answer. But uh, in, in terms of the other way of the more like a co motor task and the com completed motor task things, I have a few other new technology to using uh more like a complex task so yeah, it's yeah, not I'm like a that yeah, yeah uh, i see like at the new technology for like, creating some human situation more a bit bit more like a com um the complicated way but i say uh, using the electron master uh, electromagnetic and then it's provided like, a super fast movement and the humans and then it's also transparent movement anyway but there is actually we can apply uh the four fund sorry something like this so still it's like a four uh, by, by manual and then kind of the you know, four four finger same thing, but uh, yeah. So this this those kind of actuation is like a one way of the providing more complex movement for the humans. The one thing, and the other things you mentioned like uh, and then um, what if after the some like a uh, after the removing uh, augmentation, how we can right. preserve those kinds of acceleration? This is actually what we did in the Kai twenty. Uh, 201, 2021 is actually, this experiment is actually the EMS faster movement. Still, this is a very simple task, but the, the, what if after the, some training of the EMS and then removing EMS, is it still that our reaction time get faster or not? Uh, we, we, we investigate this and then the question is like, uh, you know, uh, we apply the several, delay, several uh, pattern of the EMS and then in short, if we apply too much fast EMS without agency, we cannot get not, not so much significant. And also, if we apply the late EMS and this long, it's not a no acceleration. We not we we are we didn't get any acceleration after removing the EMS. But here is the point that if we can apply EMS faster training, and the fit is also still um, preserving sense of agency, and after the even in the removing EMS. 
our acceleration, our reaction time get faster in eight millisecond. And eight millisecond is actually looks like a small, but uh, in, when we think about like a 200 millisecond level in the human actually, it's actually kind of 10% something. So it's, it's actually impact a lot. Yeah, so that is kind of something we did in the, the acceleration. Uh, sorry, still I can ask you. Uh, what? I, I don't know. I cannot hear your sound. But you may, of course, you can you can touch chat uh, later. I cannot hear. You, sorry. Somehow, somehow I cannot hear the sound. Oh, I see. I mm, I cannot hear well. And uh... okay, hi. <laughs> I think I'm ah. asked to come off of mute now. So to ask my question, thank you for your talk. Okay. Um, my name is Amina. Actually, you have perfectly answered my question about the pen drop task, whether okay. or not it's improved. So, uh, do you nice. do you have any conjectures as to why uh, the sense of agency re results in that improve? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That thank you, thank you. That is actually the still our going on the project, which means like what is a, this is actually a fundamental question is like a, what is the function of the sense of agency? Because like a, I think like one of the the function of the sense of agency is like accelerating or gating the, our human uh, more, uh, learning. So which means it means like providing some sense of agency is a key point to providing or driving uh, the learning. And this is because like when we imagine like a motor learning or some of the, uh, the process. So if we adapt to the non-sense of agency things, the learning will be so much converged and we cannot, we are diverse. So we cannot converge the learning into the specific task. So I think our brain actually the gate, the our learning process, only we have a sense of agency in the action these kinds of uh, the learning is happened. And the, the, if we don't have a sense of agency, we don't learn or adapt those motions. I think that is our working hypothesis, but still working on that it, yeah. Mm, appreciate it, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay.